Hello, I'm Dr. Rostenberg, and I want to personally thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. Stay tuned at the end of the video, and I will give my recipe for your healing process. Now, I wish we could achieve our results with just diet and lifestyle alone, but supplements really do make the difference. And to help you with that, you'll have an opportunity to order supplements at a discounted rate. We'll see you then. The video I am sharing with you today, I think, is a very important topic for those of us who are dealing with excess stress, uh, anxiety uh, in our lives. And, I, and I'm putting this video together because there's an underlying reason why certain people are more anxious and feel more stressed out than others. And based on the research that we've done in, in our office and the, you know, the thousands of research uh, references that we look at, there is a, a growing connection between hormones, uh, the sex hormones, estrogen and testosterone, and our body's uh, levels of stress and anxiety. So I'm showing you this estrogen bell curve because just to give you an idea of the certain types of symptoms you'll see, especially in a female, um, who has low estrogen versus high. So there's a risk of cardiovascular disease for both uh, of these types of situations. Um, but clear, you know, uh, there are some unique symptoms to low estrogen, such as you know, not having a period, hot flashes. Um, but importantly, low estrogen causes a fast COMT and MAOA system. And those of you who have uh, looked at the genetic pathways that I've talked about and, and read the articles on my blog uh, know that these two genetic pathways are very important for how we get rid of stress hormones. So estrogen deficiency, a hormone deficiency, can cause a woman to be depressed. And I'll, I'll show you data on that. Uh, on the other side, and I think this is the more common uh, problem in our society, is that we have estrogen excess. We have a very powerful estrogen dominance in our society uh, that comes from um, you know, chemical estrogens, birth control, uh, and lots of different other factors. But you know, the, the symptoms that I see the most is anxiety, um, stress. I see a lot of fibroids, uh, endometriosis, and a very high amount of gallbladder problems. And these, all of these symptoms in this category are associated not only with high estrogen, but with a slow COMT and MAO. And so I always like to say to patients that, you know, your genes are not your destiny, but they are your tendency. And so if you're already born, and I'll show you the data here, if you're born with a slow comp and MAOA system because you have the plus plus in those categories, that's already slowed down. And then when you add in the hormone imbalance, it actually can get more uh, imbalanced. And, and that's the value of looking at hormones. Uh, it's going to give us some in insight into how to help people with anxiety by balancing uh, their, their sex steroids, their estrogen and their testosterone. So I showed this bell curve as well just to give you an idea of, of people, individuals, both men and women, who have low uh, dopamine and low catecholamines are very, uh, have a lot of anger, they're impulsive, they do a lot of high-risk uh, behaviors, you'll learn why. Um, they have food cravings, um, people who are addicted to marijuana or other drugs alcohol. Uh, it's all about dopamine. And so, you know, you can look at the, the addiction as just self-medication. On the other side of the coin, uh, at the high end of catecholamines, you get a lot of uh, anxiety, panic. You get a lot of uh, high blood pressure, tachycardia, um, certainly a lot of insomnia. I mean, we deal with this every day in the office and, and chronic pain. So, you know, having High adrenaline in your body upregulates pain, and pain, um, you know, makes you more stressed out. So it's a little bit of a, a snowball effect there. So I show these to you just to keep in mind the different um, relationships when catecholamines are low and catecholamines are high. Same with estrogen. I want to show you, share with you this chart because this chart shows how estrogen is removed. Um, excuse me. This shows how adrenaline is removed from your body, and you can see that it's a fairly complex process. And what we're really talking about today are the, are the pathways right here, MAO, and the pathway COMT. And so this, uh, these are gatekeepers, right? If these pathways are slowed down, then this norepinephrine molecule is not going anywhere. 
Uh, conversely, if these are sped up, then that norepinephrine will work its way down and, and finally end up in the urine where you can test it. Um, so in other words, what we're saying is, the big idea with this video is that estrogen slows down the COMT and the MAOA gene. It slows down those, the expression of those genes, it slows down those enzymes. This is going to make the half-life of adrenaline longer. So the individual with, with a plus-plus MAOA and a plus-plus COMT on their genetic report and who has estrogen dominance is going to be double prone to anxiety, stress, insomnia, and chronic pain. That's just what the research shows and, and it's what we see in practice. On the other side of the coin though, we see that testosterone does the opposite to estrogen and you know men and women are very different biologically because of those hormones and you can see that it, those hormones affect our brains differently as well. Testosterone actually speeds up the MAO and the COMT system causing men with healthy testosterone levels to actually have lower uh, adrenaline and lower dopamine on average than women and this is this gets into why men do what they do in the behaviors uh, that men are known for. So I just want to talk real quick about COMT and show you how important it is um, for the breakdown of estrogen. And you know, as we talk about genes, we work on genetics and, and chronic disease, we're always looking at all these different aspects. Um, but one important one certainly is estrogen. Um, and estrogen has to get methylated in order to be a healthy, calming, health-promoting estrogen. If, if estrogen does not get methylated, if it's not a two methoxy estrogen because it can't work through the COMT system, then estrogen is actually going to be more aggressive. It's going to cause estrogen dominance, very strong, severe PMS symptoms, fibroids, endometriosis, gallbladder problems, and even cancer. And a lot of cancer is related to estrogen such as breast, uterine, and, and, and ovarian. So th this was a great study because they basically created preeclampsia in mice. And, and they realize that you can create preeclampsia by re inhibiting the COMT enzyme. You can, you can do that in, in a mouse model. And then when they, when they increased the COMT function and they gave, the, they gave the healthy estrogens back into the mouse, well, it, it, it prevented and reversed preeclampsia. So this is just one study talking about one type of estrogen uh, issue. But you can see that when the estrogen becomes methylated, it resolves disease. So methylated estrogen is extremely healthy and, and this is why we look at these genes. So I mentioned before that estrogen downregulates or slows down COMT. And that's exactly what the research says. Uh, est estradiol E2 decreases contactivity. It downregulates the gene, it downregulates the enzyme, and so the more estrogen a woman has, the more anxiety she will have. You can see here from this uh, website, I pulled this chart out, it was very useful. You can see the, the higher the anxiety score, the more anxiety. So this is increasing towards more anxiety and this is towards more estrogen. You can see the trend. So clearly there is a relationship um, between estrogen and anxiety and it's, it's actually based off these uh, methylation pathways. Uh, I wanna share this with you because it just shows you that COMT slows down estrogen by 30%. And uh, you know those of us uh, who have the Valmet 158 COMT are really going to be uh, more sensitive to stress. Uh, you you listening to this out there know this. Um, when 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 things are balanced, I mean you're very sharp, very intelligent. Some of the smartest people I've ever met are this way, but they have to um, really be careful with balancing everything else in their life, including their hormones, because they are more sensitive to stress and exhibit higher anxiety, all things being equal. This next study is a little bit older, but what it proved was how estrogen um, basically is an antidepressant. So a woman needs estrogen, um, not too much, not too little, that's why I draw a bell curve, because you want to be in the middle of the bell curve. But a woman, as women go through adrenal fatigue, they're talking about adrenal insufficiency, um, the adrenal fatigue lowers all the hormones, not just progesterone, but really all hormones, DHEA, progesterone, and even estrogen. And as the estrogen drops, the woman's MAO system goes faster. Faster MAO breaks apart serotonin quicker, leads to more depression. 
And they were able to prevent that and reverse it by giving a little bit of estrogen to these women um, to make them feel better. And those of you listening who are uh, you know, postmenopausal or going through that uh, menopausal change, um, you're, you're probably aware that a lot of times one of the symptoms of menopause is depression, and that's certainly directly related to the loss of estrogen combined with adrenal fatigue and some other factors. I want to share with you another study kind of harping on the same idea about MAO and basically uh, postpartum depression is related to these methylation genes and these neurotransmitter pathways. So when a woman's pregnant she has about 30 times the level of estrogen in her body pregnant than she does uh, regularly and at, at the moment of delivery all of those uh, estrogen molecules are going to get detoxed rapidly out of her body. So she's going to go from high estrogen to low estrogen in just a matter of hours almost. And that actually can speed up the MAOA gene and the MAOA pathway and cause her to just chew through and break down and detoxify all of her uh, serotonin and, and a lot of her catecholamines really quickly. And that's what they're pointing to as the cause of postpartum depression. In some women, uh, that system gets turned on goes faster and it causes depression. So I share this with you just to highlight the relationship between estrogens and MAOA. Um, in cases like this with postpartum depression, you're really looking at uh, you know, adrenal fatigue and some other functional issues that never really have been addressed that are causing the body to not be able to self-regulate. But um, if you want to know what the real cause of postpartum depression is, it's an MAOA gene and pathway going, on, going too fast. And we do have some strategies to, to slow that down naturally. Um, again, just another kind of uh, data point on the same idea. Um, you know, uh, there is an antidepressive effect of, uh, of estrogen, and it's inhibiting the MAOA, MAO pathway. So um, that's the data point I wanted to share with you on that. Um, estrogen slows down COMT, it slows down MAOA, uh, MAOB. And therefore, estrogen is going to be an antidepressant when it's low, and then when estrogen becomes high, it's going to cause anxiety, panic, worry, insomnia, chronic pain, gallbladder problems. I mean, this is stuff we see every single day uh, in our office. So if you're struggling with that, uh, please reach out. We can help you. Um, now we're going to look at men. And, you know, men are not immune from hormone problems. I mean, looking at this, uh, you know, these beach-going uh, gentlemen here, you can see that looks more like a female breast than a male breast. So there are hormone changes going on in men that are not healthy as well. Um, if, if estrogen slows down COMT, then you can bet that uh, testosterone speeds it up. And that's what the research shows. Um, basically, testosterone and dihydrotestosterone, the stuff that makes guys bald, um, increases the speed of COMT, which means men uh, detoxify their adrenaline very quickly. And what that leads men to being prone to is to being grumpy. This is why men in general uh, get grumpy and get angry. They um, choose to do things uh, that are risky, like race cars, jump out of airplanes with parachutes attached to your body, rock climb, shoot guns, um, lots of different risky behavior that I think men are more prone to. Um, it's because they're self-medicating. Um, as men, we, we need adrenaline, we need some stress in our life in order to get our dopamine back up. Whereas a female, when she wakes up out of bed, if she's estrogen dominant, she has a, more than a day's worth of stress in her body already because the estrogen is blocking the breakdown of the adrenaline. And that's gonna change that woman's behavior and just like it changes the guy's behavior. So I share that with you because I think that's kind of an interesting uh, way to look at it, that that's the reason why men do what they do, man. We are addicted to adrenaline because it actually is medicine for us. Whereas women with an excess of estrogen are gonna be already have way too much adrenaline and you know they need to avoid it and they, we need to work on coaching through that. So I share this uh, last few studies with you here real quick. Basically that, again, androgens, increase the expression not, on, not only of tyrosine hydroxylase, which produces dopamine, but um, the breakdown of, of COMT, MAOA, and MAOB RNAs. So testosterone does the opposite of estrogen. Testosterone makes the half-life of adrenaline much shorter. So guys are able to detoxify adrenaline much faster than women when the, hormonal, uh, the, the hormones that men are supposed to have are there and the hormones that women are supposed to have there. As long as you see a, a you know, 
a guy with normal testosterone levels and a woman with healthy uh, estrogen levels, you're going to see that the man detoxifies stress hormones faster and the female um, doesn't. Um, and that changes our behavior. Uh, so here's a grumpy old guy kind of harping on that idea. And you know, another thing that uh, testosterone does is it helps to activate the ER beta pathway uh, in the brain. And ER beta is kind of the antidote to estrogen dominance, to estrogen toxicity, um, and, and that's a really good thing. So, so men, if you're listening to this, um, you know, your, your testosterone levels are important and there's a lot of natural things we can do to raise them and support them optimally and, and that has a very calming, um, healthy effect on your brain. When I meet men who have low testosterone, one of their complaints is that uh, they are, they're suffering from you know, insomnia, uh, they're having a lot more panic and, and anxiety in their life and it's really not as out of character for them. They've never gone through something like that before. So what we can deduce from that is when a man's testosterone is low, he becomes estrogen dominant and starts to suffer the same types of symptoms that women typically suffer when they're estrogen dominant. So um, I hope this video kind of uh, helps to shine some light on, on the sex hormone uh, aspects of, of working on methylation and these neurotransmitter pathways. And this is stuff that we focus on every day with patients and we've, we're seeing some really good results uh, by looking at this. Um, again, this is Sterling's report. I think this is the report that uh, um, I prefer. Uh, I do prefer this one. I think uh, it's just easier for us to read We're, and it's got a lot of good genes in there um, for us to uh, take a look at. But you can see that you know when you see a report like this where the MAOA is is red and the COMT is red, you know, you're looking at somebody who's just going to be sharp as a whip, super great memory, very kind of, uh, uh, you know, has, has a lot of good attributes for learning and memory when they're healthy. But if their hormones are imbalanced, oh man, they're going to, they're going to make these problems worse and it's going to be really hard to calm down and, and to kind of enjoy life and to get that peace of mind that we're all looking for. And so that's really what this work is all about. Thank you so much for watching this video and sharing it with your friends and family. I personally believe, as I'm sure you do as well, that educating ourselves about what it truly means to be healthy is the only way we're gonna change healthcare. I have created a website as a resource for you. To take advantage of this information, navigate to www.beyondmthfr.com and take a look around. In addition to blogs and articles I have written, you will find a tab on the menu labeled Protocols. It is a growing list of tools that I use in my office to help support my patients. You will find background information on common health conditions. You will find a detailed supplement protocol and you will find dietary advice to support the body's natural healing process. You will also have access to order recommended supplements at a discounted rate and have them shipped to your front door. I'm giving you the tools that I use and practice every day to help you overcome health challenges and live a happier, healthier life. I have done my best to give you that information and you will find it on these protocol pages. If you are looking for more help than simply what supplements should, should you take or what diet should you follow, I'm encouraging you, I'm inviting you to come to Boise and see me. Let me and my team and my staff take care of you. We have patients coming from all over the country and all over the area on a regular basis, and there's room for you too. Now, if coming all this way to Boise is too big of a commitment, then please pick up the phone or email my office. We can work together from a distance.